What has the most factories in the world? There are the most sugar factories in the world, billions, maybe trillions. But I'm not talking about factories that people build. Its Latin name is Narcissus. We call him Daffodil. Daffodil flower. There are currently 25 flowers blooming on this flower. It means there are 25 sugar factories. These factories open every season, produce products for a while and then close. There is a sugar factory right there by these flowers. Nectar is produced. The white sugar or granulated sugar we use comes from sugar cane or sugar beet. This has too many calories, but it does not contain minerals and vitamins. Nectar contains sugar, vitamins, organic compounds, minerals, and aromatic substances. It is produced like a drop of water, just below the flowers. You can feel it when you put it in your mouth. Every flower on earth has one such nectar factory. The basis of sugar is carbon plus water. There is a 1 to 1 ratio. When carbon is 6, sugar is formed. The nectar, or sugar, created inside flowers consists of glucose and fructose. This is the formula for glucose. This is fructose. The formula is the same. The difference is only due to the alignment. Two sugar molecules are arranged differently and sucrose is formed. This is a model of a sugar or nectar molecule. There are 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens and 11 oxygens. I made it easily by looking at the picture but it is not easy to make a real thing. If the connection angle of an atom is different, a molecule cannot be formed. In such a change, the functional group changes and something else is formed. There are a total of 45 atoms in a molecule, but these numbers are like the safe code. If even a single digit is incorrect, the safe will not be opened. If a single atom is bonded differently, sugar will not form. Nectar formation is something like this. Let's consider these students as elements. They do this by agreement among themselves. Teachers organize them. More people are taking part here. They only come together formally. There is no change. But the elements come together and produce sugar. Does it make sense to say this? There are conscious chemists in every flower. We don't see them, but they combine elements and synthesize sugar in their secret laboratories. By imitating nature, scientists finally succeeded in synthesizing sugar with the help of catalysts. Now let's look at an article about this. The title of the article is Borrowing a Natural Recipe for Sugar Synthesis. Synthetic chemists, like overzealous nutritionists, usually avoid sugars. Nature, an expert chemist, can shift the sweets from one molecule to another with enviable finesse. But in the lab, scientists struggle to attach just one sugar molecule to another chemical unit, a process known as glycosylation. Glycosylation is carried out in laboratories using many catalysts. They even patent the method because we discovered it. However, it is a copy from nature. There is a word we should not skip here. Nature an expert chemist. So nature is like an expert chemist. Outside the lab, natural reactions use phosphates without the fiery fuss. But like a proud chef, nature guards her chemical secrets well.
These are the elements that make up a simple sugar. Reds are oxygen, whites are hydrogen, and blacks are carbon. When these are synthesized and two sugar molecules come together, sucrose is formed. This molecule is formed. I used my hands to assemble it. Let's remember the Harry Potter movie. Harry inherits the invisibility cloak from his father. When he wears his cloak, he becomes invisible. There is no such cloak, but if there were and I hid my hands with that cloak, the formation of the molecule would look like this. You don't see my hands. What do you think when you watch this image? They cut off the parts where the molecules were placed by hand during the assembly. Or they used a green glove and wiped the hand with the green box technique. Or they added the molecules one by one with the effect. Does anyone say this? Yes, there is a formation, but this table creates this formation. Or this television studio does. That would be a ridiculous statement. But what is the difference between the phrase nature makes, which we use frequently? As a result, sugar can now be produced in laboratories with the help of catalysts, imitating nature. So, what if you said, I want to put sugar produced in laboratories in my coffee? It is more expensive than gold per gram. One kilo of sugar costs more than one kilo of gold. Scientists who achieve this synthesis have an average IQ of 120-140. They worked for 10 years and figured out how to synthesize sugar. Look at the power of God that nectar is produced in each flower without the need for chemistry experts or laboratories. There is another very interesting issue in nectar production. There is a relationship between flowers and the animals that receive nectar from the flowers. Bees collect nectar during the day. Therefore, flowers produce nectar during the day. But there is also the opposite. The opposite situation was observed in a study conducted in the tropical forests of Costa Rica. There is a species of bat that visits flowers at night. Since these animals are nocturnal, Nectar secretion occurs at night. The maximum amount of nectar starts to be produced from 21Y. From this moment on the flowers reach a peak in nectar production of 199.82 microliters. This is about the size of 4 drops of water. Let's say a plant produces nectar. No bees or other animals came to get the nectar. In such a case the plant takes back the nectar it secreted. It uses the nectar it secretes for itself. There is another marvel. The chemical components of flower nectar differ depending on the bee or other animal species. The synthesis is updated according to need. Nectar is produced according to the specific nectar needs of the nectar collecting animals in that region. The chemical reactions and chemical changes that occur when nectar is produced in a flower are briefly as follows. What is the relationship between nectar produced in plants and humans? If flowers do not produce nectar, bees will not visit them. If bees do not get nectar, they do not carry pollen. If pollen is not transported, pollination will not occur. Without pollination, some plants and trees will not bear fruit.
In other words, without bees, especially vegetable and fruit production will be in danger. If bees don't pollinate, we have to do that job. For this reason, these tiny sugar factories are the most invisible and valuable production centers on Earth.